to their first elk after dealing with whitetail, they're a little overwhelmed. You know, you walk up on this guy, the first thing I like to do is just give him a full big dorsal cut. Right. Like if I have a little beefier, stronger, higher grade steel knife, yep. I'll use that knife because that's your most skin cut. You want to go with the hair? Yep. So I would just start between the horns. Just right down the back. And go all the way down to his tail. And then the next cuts I would do would be, I would go ahead and cut here. We're gonna do a gutless method yep. here. A lot of people don't know how to do a gutless method. So we're gonna go ahead and do a cut down here. And then we're gonna cape this bull for taxidermy. So we'll do another cut here. So okay. if you wanna do the dorsal, I'll do the two ones across here. Yep. And then what we can do is we can start with the, the caping cuts and then we can start here. And by the time you get the hind quarter, I should have the cape yep. off the front shoulder. Get it down and we'll, what we'll do on a gutless method is we'll take the quarters off here and here and then we'll take the whole back strap yep. and on the back strap we'll leave all the neck rows attached. Yep. And then what we'll do is once we have that, then we'll roll them over and do the other side and then we'll show people, because the one thing most guys don't know how to do is get the tenderloins out yeah, from the on, outside. On the, yeah, yeah. Yep. without getting them. Yep. Cool. You know, because we have a pretty rough pack out here, so, yeah. you know, we're going to utilize this bull to the fullest, but unlike a deer, you know, we're not just going to gut them and go drag them off to the truck. That's right. You know, because the four of us, I don't think, could get them to the truck. And then on the taxidermy cut, everyone's a little bit different, but... I personally, I like to come up the back of the leg just above the armpit, which has the sparsest hair, and then I'll come back to where our, our center cut will be. Four ribs from the back right there gives me a starting point for my cut. He had a whole big mess of cows. take it off with all the neck meat attached or you can leave the next meat attached to the back strap I prefer to leave the back strap attached to the neck because I can salvage more of the actual back strap in the process the scapula the big shoulder plate on an elk if you come off the front of his shoulder there's a muscle line you can see it right there with the sinew kind of follow that straight up to his back. You see right there how it's separated out. I'm not going super deep. I'm staying out of that. I'm staying out of that shoulder meat. So here I've left this surface, wrote these surface bits of meat off the neck. I've left them kind of free here up with the neck. 
I followed that muscle line. I'm gonna come back around the top. And then I'm gonna swing out. So the top of the, the shoulder, you can see it right here. You just wanna get as far out in front of it, pick up as much of these flanks and all this belly, all your meat for carne asada. You can get right down onto the ribs. Take the brisket. Because we're doing a, a shoulder pack out, what we want to do here is keep our meat as intact as we can. I just think it's easier to handle. In a longer pack out where I'd bone it out, it wouldn't matter so much, but. Almost. So I'm gonna keep half the brisket here attached. And I'll just continue running down the ribs. deer table right there nice and clean the cape lay in here serves as a backdrop kind of an apron so as that front shoulders folding over it's not laying in the dirt in the first place here I'm gonna come up off this high hip front of the quarter and I'm gonna cut in on that And I am gonna clip the bottom of the back strap there, but that's as far as I'm gonna take a back strap down anyway. Now here, Kyle's already given us a little bit of a dorsal cut, but right here, when you start to get into the pelvis, you run down that dorsal cut and you'll feel that top of that hip, that pelvis bone right there. You gotta kinda cut up around it. what we're looking to do here is minimize the time that it takes me to get this meat, this whole hind quarter off quick. I want to pre-trim the whole backside as best as I can. up to the hip socket. Now I have the worst of it right there taken care of. You, I'm gonna usually start with all the loose little connective tissues up across the front, but right in here is where it gets kind of specific. And then you start getting into the connective muscle. Okay, right here. Go ahead and just tip it a little bit more to your right. Right here, we're at the hip socket. So when you come across the hip socket, right there, you heard it pop. And that's where you've come into the hip socket correctly. Go down, maybe drag that bag over a touch if I got it in the wrong spot. There we go. Let's see, so we've collectively, we've pre-done that whole quarter on the back side. So right there, minimum cutting on the inside, and it literally just fell right off the back side onto the game bag. Now we'll get Kyle to lift it up. The most important thing to remember when you're doing hind quarters is always have your buddy hold the leg. Because then at the end, when that hind comes off, you're not stuck holding that hind quarter. 
here, the next thing I'm gonna do before this meat dries, your back strap, you can kind of see the line where your back strap's gonna start right there. Down here is ribs. I'm gonna go ahead and cut across the top of that. It's already drying pretty dramatically. This will get me just burger meat. You know, such a beautiful animal. We want to make sure we utilize every ounce of it that we can. So we'll go ahead and cut all these flanks and everything else off of here. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like a whole lot of meat till you're all done, but when you're all said and done with these guys, all this little scrap meat, you know, that's 10, 15 extra burger nights or spaghetti night, whatever you want. And just an animal that I have such utmost respect for. I want to capitalize on every bit of this organic meat that we can get. So now we're back into the top of this bone here. I'm going to cut down which is where my back strap starts. The big thing I see people struggle with here is dealing with the back strap. So what I like to do, I like to cut across the top of the back strap. And then here's the last rib, here's your short ribs. So I'll cut it back down in from the top. Now I'm not going to take any connective tissue off the bottom because if I do this correctly, it's going to afford me the luxury of allowing my meat to stay connected and therefore up off the ground. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and fillet off this incredible back strap. But you see right here, there's maybe a tiny bit of touch right there, but not much. So now I've been able to take this whole back strap and the connective tissue across the top is going to support it and hold it up. The neck meat is all burger meat pretty much, especially on these big older bulls. Okay, so here I'm going to come back down on the bottom end and I'm going to come back up. Now if I was alone, I would fold it across the top of the animal when it got too heavy to hold. So I'm just going to fold it across the top of the animal's back. Now here I've got my back strap, nice and up out of the dirt. I've got my neck roast all filleted. There's a big nasty tendon in there. And it'll pretty much guide your knife right where you need to go. There we go. Now for whitetail guys, Right there is a the back strap, boys. <laughs> That's good stuff. Oh, here, let's throw some of this scrap meat in there too, Kyle. Huh? And then what we can do here is we'll clean all this up. We'll get all the rest of this loose meat off in our loose meat bags. I usually, We'll have a game bag 
that's just loose meat, it's gonna be the hardest to clean up. It's gonna have the most hair and the most sinew and everything else, so I'll clean it all up nice. And then we'll do that from there. So we're gonna pretty much just do the same thing on the other side of this elk. And then here in a minute, once we've got the other side off, we'll come in from the top and on a gutless method bull right here, I'll show you how to get your tenderloins out from the inside. I guess we could just do it right now. So I'm gonna take my hip right here and I'm gonna separate the muscle on the stomach attachment right here. Now there's a couple big tenons. There's one right here at the actual hip. There's another one right here. You gotta cut that one. And when you get up on the top here, there's one more right there. I already cut that one. So in this case here, on a gutless method, what I'll do is I'll have Kyle here help because he's very trusting. And he's gonna take his hands and just put them right there and he's not gonna move his hands at all. And I'm gonna come in around on the back side of the tenderloin. Now, I also like to tell guys from back east that have never seen gutless method that right here's where I'm removing the stink gland. And a lot of times guys don't want the stink gland, so I'll take it. <laughs> so if your guy tells you that it's the stink gland, it's a God trick. don't fall for it. It's the oldest trick in the book. So there's the inner stink loin, or stink gland, I'm sorry. But we got that out without taking any of the guts out on this animal. It keeps our meat the cleanest, tidiest. We'll roll it up, we'll flip them over, we'll cape out the other side, 